Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to today's webinar on volunteer management system. Uh, my name is Lisa. I will be your host for today and I will be uh, hopefully making sure that uh, everything runs smoothly for uh, this hour. Uh, as you will have noticed, we are delivering this webinar on Teams exceptionally. Uh, this is a first time for us, so please be kind and bear with us if we have any technical issues. If this is your first webinar with us, uh, a very warm welcome to you. Um, and if you are regulars, well, it's good to have you back, uh, albeit on a different platform. We uh, hope that in either case, you will find today's session interesting, full of good takeaways and uh, hopefully full of, of actionable uh, things that you can do within your organisations. Um, now on to today's session which is obviously on volunteer management systems. Uh, the past year has seen great enthusiasm uh, for volunteering with hopefully many new faces and skills uh, that have been joining organisations. We've also seen the, the success of uh, NHS volunteers um, and also mutual aid groups popping up around the country, so it's been great. At the same time, we've also seen uh, many organisations, perhaps it is your case as well, um, struggling to, to retain volunteers um, or because they were relying on all the volunteers having a bit of staff issues and challenges due to health concerns. I know that we are reopening um, and looking towards the next few months and hopefully a bit of summer. Uh, some of you may be wondering um, how and what systems they can use uh, so that they can keep the volunteers engaged, um, but also make the whole system organised and manageable um, without spending too much time on, on resources and, and uh, uh, hopefully making sure that everything works. Uh, with so many similar options on the market, it may be hard to find and select the right volunteer management system, uh, the one that will work best for your organisation, and that's what we are here for today. Um, so we will be presenting uh, a couple of options and, and also running through uh, what, what you know, VMS, as we will call them, are uh, and why they are important for, for your organisation and what they can uh, do for your organisations. Um, today, uh, the webinar will be hosted by Chris Hall, our Head of Marketing at Charity Digital. Um, the webinar is also um, run in partnership with Helpforce, uh, which is a non-profit organisation that helps uh, healthcare organisations across the UK accelerate the growth and the impact of volunteering. So obviously, because we are on Teams, uh, I have a few different house rules before I hand over. Unfortunately, there's no chat section, uh, but please do send your questions uh, using the Q&A button. So those are two speech bubbles overlapping one another that are at the top right hand side of your screen normally. Um, so you can pop all of your questions there um, and then we will um, do our very best to, to answer some of them at the end of the presentation. Um, it is a Unfortunate that we, we're not able to see um, whether you, you're enjoying the, the the presentation or not, but uh, this 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 is Teams. Uh, at least we'll be able to to read all of your questions. Um, at the end of the session and the presentation, we will obviously send you a quick uh, feedback form to fill by email. Um, so please don't don't forget to to fill it in. Um, and then it's uh, four past one. So without further ado, let me hand over to Chris. Thank you. Yes. Can, can everybody see me yet? I am, can see am, you. I, am I here? Am I there? Sorry, I'm a little bit in the dark. Teams is new to me, but thank you very much, Lisa, for that um, lovely, warm and kind introduction, as always. Um, as Lisa said, I am Chris Hall. I am the Head of Marketing here at Charity Digital. Um, and for those who've joined us before, please bear with me a little bit um, while I introduce myself, Charity Digital and everything else to the newbies with us. Um, as I said, I'm Chris Hall. I have been in um, in the charity sector for over two years now, I'm getting on two and a half years and spent seven years prior to that in tech and um, working predominantly for startups um, based all over the world, um, up in Newcastle, um, over in New York and down here in London as well. Um, I also did a, a couple of years in Google um, where I learned what it was like 
what it was like to be part of a corporate cog um, <laughs> in a, over a pint. I'll tell you that, that story in a lot more detail. Um, as you can tell from my accent, I am a Geordian. I'm a proud one at that, and I am a shameless Newcastle United fan. Um, we all have our crosses to bear, as I like to tell people. Um, who are Charity Digital? Well, we are a charity that exists to help other charities be more digital in a pure and simple form. Um, and we do this through three really well-defined pillars. Um, we have our content arm. Um, so we release anywhere between sort of 60 and 80 written articles in a given month. Um, we also have a um, bi-weekly podcast series that kind of gets into the nitty gritty of some of the sector's biggest issues surrounding digital and how, um, and how charities can tackle those. Um, we also have this wonderful webinar series, um, which we run fortnightly as well, which you're all a part of today. And thanks very much for joining us. Um, these are more skills based, uh, where we look to help charities go away with some tangible things that can take back to their organisation and make, make some decisions on. Um, we also have events as a second pillar. So if you were with us last week at our big digital strategy day, um, we ran that all virtually. That was just one of our four or five events that we run throughout the year. Um, we do sort of those dedicated Be More Digital days every couple of months. And then every March we have our huge conference as well. Um, managed to reach thousands of people, thousands of charity professionals through that medium as well. Um, so watch this space as we look to do even more um, over the coming years. Um, we also uh, run and operate the UK's only discounted and donated software program called Charity Digital Exchange. Essentially what this is, is um, charities can come to us to get access to the likes of Microsoft, Adobe, Zoom, um, Avast and a whole host of other different types of software at a really heavily discounted rate. Um, to give you a, a, a flavour of that, we can offer um, Avast antivirus software to charities to qualify in charities for just £6. Um, on a, it's like a saving, I think it's 40, it's around £48 retail price. So um, massive savings. Um, and all you have to do is sign up to the exchange and get registered with us. Um, so definitely recommend heading over and checking that out. Uh, as Lisa said, this uh, this webinar is in conjunction and partnership with Health Force as well, uh, and they help force partner with health and care organisations across the UK to accelerate growth and the impact of volunteering. It's a pleasure to be to be partner with them today to be able to bring you this. Anyways, that is the uh, pleasantries over with. <laughs> uh, so thank you for bearing with us there, and let's dive into what we're all here to discuss. <coughs> Apologies for that. You know, a, a lot of us, and and I assume all of you on the webinar here today, really heavily rely on volunteers to to deliver the vital services that that we all run, and also to fundraise the money that help make the organisations that we work for so special. You know, volunteers are the, are the backbone in a lot of ways of the non-profit sector, and an organisation should always aim to make the process of volunteering as easy and as seamless as possible. However, it's easy for me to say that. <laughs> it's a lot harder for us to do things like that. Um, you know, as, as organisations, we have limited time, we've got limited resources, uh, and we've got ever-grown demands on us, not, not to mention what we've all had to deal with over the past sort of 18 months. You know, often attracting, recruiting and, and managing volunteers can be really challenging, um, particularly when, when resources and budget are tight. You know, we've got to work with what we have um, in getting getting these volunteers in and onboarding them and is kind of is not always the most efficient and optimized as it possibly could be. It's where kind of digital steps in though. Uh, digital provides a, a really strong help in hand with this. Um, gone should be the days of the Word docs and Excel sheets and post-it notes to manage volunteer information. And gone of those sort of expensive but clunky tech as well that is actually hard to use and even 10 times harder to get the buy-in for. You know, we've had this sort of mini evolution of modern volunteer management systems that now offer something to organisations of all shapes and sizes, regardless of their time and resource requirements as well. Now, what we're starting to see are free options, low cost options, paper volunteer options, bespoke options, standardised options and everything you can possibly think of in between. I mean, it's it's we're starting to get to a place now where there is really is truly a system to improve every organization depending on what they're looking for and as long as that organization is willing to do a little bit of research or in this case let us do it for you 
So that being said, in today's webinar, we're looking to explore a little bit of the basics of volunteer management, and we're going to offer organisations a guide to using volunteer management systems. And I'll follow that up with an overview of, of what we believe some of the some of the top five systems that are currently on the market that we recommend you all go have a look at after today's session. I do want to say, and I do want to say this quite clearly, that it is important to note that I, I do not profess to be a volunteer management expert. Um, but I've pulled this, this webinar together with the help of uh, the amazing content team that we have here at Charity Digital. Um, we've done a lot of extensive research. We do this type of things for more things outside of volunteer management. We've got a great one for fundraising management platforms as well, for CRM systems, uh, for text donation systems. We do this quite regularly. So while I'm not an expert, we have put uh, hours and hours of research into this to be able to give you the information that you need to help you um, with your volunteer management management system decision making. So be kind to us when you're asking questions so <laughs> if you're reading between those lines. Um, so what is a volunteer management system? Or what is volunteer management to begin with? Sorry. Essentially, it's a it's an all-encompassing encom term for recruiting volunteers, tracking volunteers, communicating and engaging with volunteers, among many other things. Volunteer management is anything that involves interaction between an organisation and their and its volunteers. You know, being able to effectively and efficiently manage volunteers has a ton of benefits, which we'll all come to in a little bit. But predominantly, it allows charities to improve their relationship with volunteers. It allows them to streamline internal and external processes and allows them to improve the overall return on investment and make full use of the skills and services that, that, are the, that these amazing volunteers provide. Secondly to that, it also allows charities to think big picture and long term. You know, it allows us to build a much more strategic and positive relationship with individual uh, volunteers. These positive relationships go on to improve retention rates, you know, as volunteers are always willing to return to charities that they enjoy working for. It's, uh, it's quite simple when you think of it like that. You know, we see effective volunteer management as essential to improving process and operations within an organisation. And these volunteer management systems offer an easy route to streamline in that process. Um, I mean, a volunteer management system, I hear some of you say, what, what, what's one of those? What's it all about? Well, at the risk of, you know, keep on repeating myself, it's a tool that really helps effective volunteer management. Platforms or systems support the recruitment of volunteers. They support, uh, they, they offer communication and coordinate with volunteers. And they also work out a schedule for volunteers and, and do a lot more besides that. But ultimately they do provide one centralized place for streamlining processes. Everything you need to know about your volunteers in one place. Now, various organisations use the systems, including schools, hospitals, museums, and so on. Um, but the systems are particularly used in the sort of non profit non-for-profit sector where managing volunteers is vital and here's why it's vital. Each volunteer management system will provide different benefits to different organisations, often depending on different objectives, but organisations can still expect some broad benefits um, such as improving processes and operations, ensuring volunteer information is kept in that one centralised location, um, ensuring all communication is also kept in that one centralised place as well. Um, it also is very good at helping with compliance and data protection and other regulations and safeguarding as well. Um, it's been found to improve retention rates of volunteers, as I was saying before, you know, that good experience keeps keeps volunteers coming back for more. It also allows um, allows you to harness the best skills of volunteers by matching the right volunteer to the right job. Um, and they also promote effective schedule and calendar management as well. They also provide a lot of different functionalities, often aimed at organisations of different sizes and, and usually at varying costs. But some common features you can expect to see um, when you're looking or researching any sort of volunteer management systems are, are the following, which is you know that communication in one central place, functions that match jobs to skills, the calendar management, schedule management, um, full, fully sort of full fleshed out and easy to access volunteer profiles, um, either self-service portals or apps for volunteers, um, which allows them to engage with um, you as an organisation or the tasks that you want them to complete. Um, and the features to support compliance uh, as well, that makes sure all the data is kept in a safe, secure location um, and is kept uh, as GDPR compliant as well. So, you know, all those being said, I think it's 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 safe to say that we can actually narrow down, you know, the 
narrow down all the benefits of a volunteer management system into five key areas. Um, where these, you know, these five keys, key areas are where these platforms really earn their keep. It's kind of a, a unique selling point for all of these, and that's recruitment, communication, engagement, tracking, and recognition. And I'm sure you'll start to notice a theme throughout the webinar today. So uh, first up is recruitment. Um, organizations need to recruit the right number of volunteers that they can effectively manage and ensure that those volunteers possess the right skills for the job in hand. And that, uh, that, that's harder than it sounds. You know, volunteer management systems can really help you create profiles that will attract the right skills and talents. You can then create pages that can attract more volunteers and keep all previous communication in that one single location um, to be able to use that profile again and again to attract the right type of volunteers that you're looking for. And in addition to the above, um, we're also uh, can, there's also scheduling features of volunteer management system will help you to really improve and streamline the selection process. That means that you know non-for-profits or organizations are not simply onboarding the right people, but they are onboarding the right people for the right time specifically as well, matching those skills that they need with the perfect time of tasks and things that need to be carried out. The second USP is sort of communication. Um, you know, after recruiting your volunteers, you really need to engage with them in a way that feels welcoming, informative, and meaningful. You know, one issue that we've we've found in our research that organisations commonly face uh, is the sheer number of channels which with they which with, with which they communicate um, with volunteers. Um, you know, some volunteers email, others. And pick up the phone and ring. Some use WhatsApp, some use text, some might use Facebook Messenger, for example, or Instagram or something like that. There's, there's so many ways that a volunteer can potentially keep in touch with you these days. However, a volunteer management system would ensure that um, that communication could all happen in one place. Systems are really clever in the fact that they can incorporate many of the channels I've just mentioned, SMS, email, WhatsApp, etc., and transfer that information into that one central location, which means no matter no matter what, um, no matter how a volunteer tries to reach out to your organisation, you receive it in the same uh, in the same format each time, making it way way easier to keep on top of your volunteer comms. Uh, in addition to that, um, some volunteer management systems uh, also allow users to automate communications. So you might have, you know, you might know you've got a certain series or a funnel of communications you need for a volunteer to. to do a certain task. You might have a initial, you know, once you've recruited them, once they've been assigned, you might have um, initial information followed by a reminder, followed by a follow up um, and feedback loop. That funnel could be automated for every task that you have. This really frees up time for employees to focus on other important tasks um, and just saves time and, you know, allows you to be able to reach potentially more volunteers than you need to. Bear with me, I'm just going to take a little sip of my juice here. Thank you. Um, next up, we have in, uh, engagement. You know, organisations need to engage with volunteers way above the traditional means of communication that we've just been talking about. That means getting to know them a little bit more and understanding their, their motivations and the drive, um, as well as their skills and talents behind why they want to volunteer. That means, you know, ensuring the tasks they perform make the most of those talents. Um, this also makes engaging, uh, also means engaging with their schedules as well. You know, volunteer uh, management systems allow, not, uh, allow organisations to match skills. The system will help organisations to effectively engage with volunteers who have the necessary talents to perform the task at hand. Matching volunteers with the appropriate tasks is, is mutually beneficial. You know, it allows organisations to improve productivity um, while ensuring that the volunteer is not taken for granted and is given the tasks that match their passion and skill set. I mean, personally, um, you know, whenever I, um, you know, you, you've got a new task in an organisation, not necessarily um, from a volunteering perspective, but I think it works across across the board. You know, you you hand out. You hand out tasks based on two things, skill set and passion. Um, and the, you know, the volunteer, the employee, the colleague who shows the most passion uh, and has the, the highest skill set to match the job should be the person uh, inevitably to take that task head on. And it works the same for volunteers and the beauty of these volunteer management systems and, and it, the sort of in-depth data and, and profiling that you can get from them allows you to see exactly that. Um, so you can essentially pick the best person for the best tasks 
you then get the best reward out of it in terms of job done. In addition, um, volunteer management systems allow feedback from volunteers as well, which is the most crucial part of the funnel. Um, this allows organisations to improve any processes and better, better engage with volunteers. You know, as I said, it's the critical part of the, the volunteer management life cycle and a, better, and, and a really good cracking way to ensure volunteer retention. You know, with anything that you're looking to do, any change that you want to make, it's, it's the people who use such things most that um, that can give you the best feedback and give you the best direction of where to go with things. It's you know, a huge part of volunteer management and, and using volunteer management systems is to make sure you're regularly speaking to volunteers and regularly getting feedback on, on the platform, on the system, on your processes and, and, and policies as well. Next up, we have tracking. So, um, Tracking numbers, hours, skills, recruitment, attrition rates, you know, this can all be uh, very, very time consuming activities when organisations do not have any ill inbuilt or, you know, automated reporting. Um, these VMSs often have tracking functionalities that help you, you sort of keep on top of all of your volunteers activities, all of these sort of things that we've just mentioned. And this is really important for organisations. Again, it frees up time and resources and makes that feedback so much easier and actionable. It gives you a much bigger chance to do something with it. Um, but on the flip side of that, tracking is also critically important for the volunteer. It really helps them understand what has been achieved from the tasks that they do. And often they're, they've come to you because they're passionate about what you do and they want to see the difference they're, they're making like, like we do on the daily. Um, they want to know it's the difference that they have made. You know, volunteer management systems track these the efforts of volunteers in that one place. Again, um, they can generate reports, they can show patterns, illustrate time spent on various projects, show where improvements need to be made, and they broadly demonstrate the impact of not only your organisation but the, the impact that that one volunteer has had as well. Excuse me. Oh, this, I've been attacked by a sneeze there trying to force its way out. Sorry. <laughs> and there's nothing worse. Oh. Thanks for that. Um, reports help volunteers quantify impact, as I was saying. Uh, this could be a massive incentive for, for any volunteer to continue volunteering, specifically with your organisation. Um, and as Lisa mentioned, it's been hard over the last sort of year to keep hold of, of, of volunteers as, as, the, as the environment changes. Your trek and, and, re and report and encourage this long term relationships. It allows the volunteer to feel useful to the community um, that it's helping and feel valued by the charity or, or organisation. As well. Last of our five is recognition, and again, this is it's, it's a huge part that is enabled by tracking and remote uh, tracking and reporting. They are especially important when it, in terms of recognition. Organisations need to need to practice acknowledgement hugely, you know, and really ensure that volunteers do not feel forgotten or underappreciated. Very similar to donors. If, you, if you're familiar with, with us talking about fundraising before, I say the same thing about um, about donors, uh, and I think this, this this works very well for volunteers as well. You know, for donors, you send them on a journey, you, you're, you've got your different levels of engagement. Uh, at the end, it's feedback and thanks. You know, I always talk about blood.co.uk being the greatest. It's sort of fulfilling the, the, the feedback back loop when it comes to when it comes to a donation journey and I think this will sink the volunteering as well so albeit a very different donation um I think you know when you if you've ever given blood you know you'll you'll have the, the lead up where you, you pick your time slot yeah you, um you know you'll pick your, your centre you'll go you'll have great crack with the nurses uh, there and you know they'll look after you you'll 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 give your donation, you'll have your tea and biscuits, um, you'll head off home and then in a couple of days you'll get a you'll get a massive thank you text and a uh, thank you for donating blood, your your blood's gone on to do this, it's gone to this hospital or it's gone to do this. Fantastic, it makes me every time I get that text, you know, the next time they call or, you know, I might even pick up the phone straight away and book my next one in, but the next time I'm called I know I feel value to that particular organisation and donation cycle very similar for volunteers they need to feel appreciated by what they're doing for you you know it could be as simple as sort of sending out a simple thank you note 
or you know you could go a little bit further uh throw an entire event dedicated to the hard work of volunteers you know something's you know you can get as creative as you want to with this sort of stuff and come up with great ways to keep them coming back for more but as we said they are the, often the backbone of, of delivering services or raising funds so it's important to to make them feel valued you know either way you know these VMSs can really help that. Some some systems are getting really clever with gamification and other things. Um, you know they have functionalities in built there to promote volunteer recognition through thank you messages. But from a gamification side, there's there's one we've seen as well that has um, online badges as well, so people can can actually win certain recognition badges and compete with each other to increase these badges and uh, as well. So you know they it it, it motivates them to work harder. Um, and you know they, they appear on systems with leaderboards and stuff like that. So there's some really interesting stuff there you can use to not only encourage recognition, but to encourage hard work, <laughs> more work as well. And, and gamification is a brilliant way to do that. However, I must say, hold your horses, let's have a sit back to reap all the benefits and, and, and more before we kind of understand all that. What we need to ensure is that you're actually using the right system for your organization. And to do that, it's really important that your organization establish some goals uh, and really outline what is needed to support your volunteers before looking at and trying individual systems. Um, one way we've we've done this is obviously, you know, you can start to find your full strategy, but talk to your volunteers as well. Um, you know, for organizations with ample resources, you might want to consider putting a really full fleshed out strategy um, with research backed by insights and analytics. And we'd recommend that if you have that. But but although that that is what we recommend, you don't need to be that in depth and you shouldn't let it put you off if you don't have those resources. You can really start quite simply by just asking and answering um, these simple questions of yourself and of your volunteers. You know, what problems do you face in terms of managing volunteers? What challenges do you have? What do you want to fix? You know, are you failing to utilize the full potential of volunteers? Are you tracking them in any way? Are you tracking output as well as input? Do you have a high turnover is your, of, of volunteers? Is your retention rate really low? Are you effectively engaging with volunteers and are they effectively engaging with you? Is there open dialogues? Is there, you know, it, are you continuously engaged with each other? Are the engagement rates high in the communication that you use? Have you faced any issues when communicating with volunteers? You know, is there high text but low emails or vice versa? Are you, what do you use to currently track volunteers? Are you currently tracking them at all? And how do you report the impact of volunteers? Or are you reporting on it all, at all? All really necessary questions uh, that you need to start asking yourselves and your volunteers. And by simply sort of answering the above questions, you can really start to develop an outline of the problems you need to address. You know, perhaps you've noticed some weak areas or some blind spots have kind of unveiled themselves to you. Or maybe you're doing well <laughs> in a particular area and you really want to double down on your success. You know, either way, using these answers to use these answers to really define a goal and a and a, and a sort of map that points you in a direction that wants you where you want to go and once you've understood that goal you can really start exploring the options on the market that can really help you go out and get it um or you can check out one of the five we've already looked at for you <laughs> so now that you have a broad understanding of the benefits of volunteer management systems um, along with how they work and how you could use them um, we can actually turn to the systems themselves and as i said we've we've spent a bit of time doing some research um, and again we've we've pulled together all the information we think you'll need to be able to go have a conversation with with uh, with your board with the leadership or even internally with colleagues and, and, and other staff members so without further ado um here are five great volunteer management systems for your charity to consider. Uh, I must say these are in no particular order as well. It's not a one to five. <laughs> it's just um, kind of as we as we found them and rallied them off. So first up, we have Better Impact. Better Impact is a well known among the volunteer management system community. Um, it boasts its own database uh, and an online training space. It allows you to create individual profiles for your volunteers uh, and create e-learning modules for them to work through as well to help them better onboard themselves to the platform. Better Impact also offers what it calls enterprise functionalities for multi-sites 
multi-site organizations where volunteer management might be decentralized um, and they also catered to a whole host of organizations and um, they had a huge huge list of on, on the website and i didn't want to waste sort of four or five minutes of your time rattling each one and off but it it kind of goes from hospitals and airports to charity shops museums theaters zoos as pretty there's pretty much everybody they potentially cater to um, really expansive um system um what could you kind of expect um from it from it in terms of features um i think i've only included maybe six or seven um but there was a lot you know they claim it's easy to use got a really intuitive interface um they've got really knowledgeable and friendly support on online staff and that was kind of supported by a lot of the the reviews that i read as well um customizable volunteer profiles and organization profiles flexible schedule with with rules around who can do what so really heavily security settings which is great um tracking and reporting on hours outputs feedback and, and a few other things as well um individual and mass targeted email and text communications um it has desktop and tablet volunteer port as well and an app specifically for volunteers which is really great and um, they also had a volunteer time clock where volunteers would be tracked as tapping the clock in, in and out and you could see that live in real time um the e-learning for volunteer onboarding training was great and um, they could access sort of um, on-demand modules um where they could get up to speed with the platform on their own time um, and they also is encrypted data storage and gdpr compliance to make sure all the data is protected as well a lot of really neat features um the pricing was based mostly on a number of volunteers um and they, they had they, there were quite a few other tiers um other than what they show online but generally um these figures are what you can expect from what we what we found out during our research anything from up to 15 volunteers would start at 160 uh, 168 pound per year or the equivalent of 15 pound uh, for a month if you boosted that up to sort of 500 uh, volunteers that would jump to 624 pound per year or 50 pound per month 52 pound per month um if you were to boost that up to 5,000 volunteers across separate sites, again, this was more of the enterprise account, and that was starting at sort of, if you're looking at 3,000, just over 3,000 pounds per year, or 252 pound per month. Um, but it's important to know that at any level, the fee included unlimited administrators, industry leading support, and regular updates with new features available, as well as access to the whole e-learn and video training li library as well. It's also really important to know, as with a lot of these, um, they, they seem to be great at offering a, a, a 30 day free trial, uh, which is something we'd always recommend, you know, when we were talking about goals, you don't want to just go in, at, at, you know, at the paid for level. If there's a 30, 30 day free trial, always, always give it a go um, and see how that platform or system specifically aligns with what you're looking for. Next on our list, and as I said, no particular order is Assemble. Um, generally, Assemble is another popular option for volunteer management systems. It's a it's a modern looking software. Um, it's got various options for customization, including a, a drag and drop editor, customized sign up forms, and branding options. It also boasts really strong automation credentials uh, and has an emphasis on re real big emphasis on re on reference checking and compliance as well. Some of its key functionalities are customizable sign up forms, searchable profiles. Such as uh, really good and, and you know through a search bar instead of having to scroll through different things and uh, fully customizable branding options so it can look make it look exactly like your organization um volunteer scheduling and tracking capabilities automated reference checking um again so you don't have to to bring that in house and a veteran system for a clear audit trail as well price wise unfortunately we weren't able to get any more information out of assemble but um they do seem to offer two two packages a premium and an enterprise um premium gives you access to five managers and 500 volunteers and all the features mentioned above while enterprise on the other hand gives you access to kind of unlimited managers and volunteers and seems to have features that are tailored more to orgs that are large and complex does say to contact assemble for price and information um in terms of user base it does really boast some big names like save the children and rspca um the latter uses assemble to sort of help manage high volumes of volunteers across different teams and locations in one place um 
uh, what, what the big sort of problem that they found is that it stopped the creation of data silos throughout the org and has really made it easier for volunteer managers to manage the volunteers that they're responsible for um, in specific teams. In addition to that, it seemed to also help find use, uh, help really find their uh, volunteers through filtering um, and find someone in particular. Um, you can also carry out bulk actions and facilitate individual team or group communications. But most importantly, the RSPCA did say that um, it just streamlined the whole recruitment process when it came to, to, to volunteer recruitment. Next up on our list is Team Kinetic. Um, in general, um, Team Kinetic appeals to charities of all sizes from what we're looking at. It has various user options. Platform aims to encourage charities to grow, develop and nurture their volunteer networks using a, a host of personalization and customization options. They have an emphasis on effective real time reporting uh, and the recognition of, of the hard work of volunteers. Um, so something if that's what you're looking for, this might be one for you. Um, I thought what was interesting about them that way are uh, one of the winners of the Tech Force 19 challenge by the NHSZ uh, and UK government uh, and have been awarded a, a grant to actually carry on building their system and platform out further. So not just a, a, a good system for now, but one to keep an eye on um, in the future as well. Top line sort of functionalities that I, that I pulled out of there were sort of customizable subdomains, uh, customizable registration and, and automation approval. It has a uh, useful data import and, and access to a, a number of APIs as well. Um, the email and uh, SMS communication all came through one central dashboard, so easy to look at and easy to manage. Um, you, this is this is the um, the system with the personalized thank you me, uh, messages and badges as well, so that that extra focus on on recognition and, and award and rewarding volunteers for, for excellent work and, and hoping to encourage them to come back more um, they also have the real-time reports in there including you know common kpis or okrs uh, um, goals however you'd like to refer them as um, from a brief look, they seem to work with a lot of smaller organisations or small or large organisations, a really good spread. Um, Oxfordshire Volunteers and Sport and Bolton were two standouts among others. Um, and they've got really accessible price points as well, um, which could which you could do some delving into. Um, they actually have a 100% free version. Uh, it is available with limited functionalities. I don't entirely know what those limited functionalities are, but that does allow you unlimited volunteers opportunities and volunteer management as well. They have an, a, an advanced option, which is priced at £19 per month, and that gives you additional branding control and administrator control as well. Um, they also have an enterprise option for uh, £149 per month, and that gives you access to a full range of features, branding, and the impressive data import and API integrations as well. Um, and they also have a, a free trial available upon consultation, so worth a conversation to see if they are the right platform for you. Um, they have a mix of sort of three to five star reviews on that platform. Um, I did go into it and look a little bit extensively. Um, the positive sort of reflected on the scalability of volunteers, so going from sort of a low amount of volunteers, the platform really does help you boost the level of volunteers that you bring into your organisation. Um, there was a lot of high praise for the customer support and its ease of use as well. Um, uh, the reservations were over more technical things, so the reg volunteer registration flow, um, the referencing functions, um, and the, the complex report and all seems to take the, the report and seems to take a little bit of time to understand as well. However, they did seem to address all this, um, or it was noted that it was in the process of being addressed, and that was not from the the organisation, but that came from the people who left the reviews themselves. Um, so adding kind of credence, I guess, to a really good customer support network. Um, where am I now? Vol. Logistics. So yeah, Volgistics is a really well, it seems to be really well suited to those small decentralized organizations. Um, it has multi-site capability, allowing charities to manage groups of volunteers at different sites, different locations. Um, it doesn't have sort of database integrations, but it's it has a bespoke report and which we allow for sort of specific data uploads as well. Um, it can also be scaled to suit larger organizations with, with certain functionalities as well. Um, 
their functionalities are extensive with all price points, including main feature set, um, which some of the highlights are as follows. The, the customizable volunteer recruitment form, communication via text and email, uh, volunteer and schedule and tracking capabilities, reporting, including customizable reports, multi-site capability for the decentralized organizations, as we mentioned, but it is uh, web browser based only. Um, it does have a, a, a couple of add-ons. So you can choose to add on specific things to it. So VicNet, um, which allows volunteers to access the online portal to update their own preferences, profiles, and timesheets, as well as admin. Uh, it, was, it also allows admin to update schedules as well. And this comes with unlimited text messaging uh, to alert volunteer and admins uh, when any changes have been made as well. They have uh, VicTouch also, which is uh, which has the same schedule features as VicNet, uh, but also lets volunteers sign in with a, an on-site clock, a time clock. The admins can then see who is clocked in and out in real time. And this also adds the neat feature of kind of recognizing birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, special events, all those little things that are a nice personal touch to, to engaging with volunteers. Lastly, you can add Vic Docs, which also allows operators to upload documents to database records, and that's up to 50 records, I think, per installation of Vic Doc. Vic Docs, sorry. Um, they have a really cool price calculator on the site as well that allows you to price exactly what you need. Um, so to give you a flavor of that, a charity with 50 volunteers, uh, 50 records to create, two operators and also wants to add in all of the above, the VicNet, VicTouch, VicDocs, uh, they can get access to the service from $17 per month. So we worked that out was around approximately £12. Um, so it, it seems a relatively low on the price point scale. Like Better Impact, uh, it does cater to a wide range of organizations and has specific information on their website um, about how it can help the different uh, different organizations. Again, um, we had a huge list and, and, and didn't want to share them all with you, uh, but very, very similar to Better, Better Impact. Um, definitely worth something to check out. Um, they do have a really cool sort of count uh, on their website that claims to have served over 5,000 organizations with over six, 6 million volunteers tracked, which is really impressive numbers. Um, like with the other platforms, they also have a free, free trial, which I'd highly recommend again, if this sounds like something your org would be interested in. And on to the last one, but certainly not least, uh, is Volunteero. This is another volunteer management system for charities of all sizes, um, with price and focused on the number of volunteers you are using, so slightly different pricing model. Um, Volunteero prioritizes ease and efficiency with drag and drop options, real-time insights, and easy form management. They also, in my opinion, alongside, um, oh, what were they called, alongside, uh, assemble um we're one of the the best websites that uh, are visited as well and I'm, I'm not being biased because their case studies are from the northeast honest um but volunteer does cover everything from form building to reimburse and volunteers and boasts quite a big fe uh, feature list um their charity dashboard um gives you form creating and submission management um, secure volunteer calls and location tracking, create uh, task lists called missions um, so that volunteers can apply to complete. It also adds groups to organize volunteers and missions um, and volunteer management dashboard to keep track of missions with in-depth reports and check activities with tracking. It's got the real-time filterable, ins filterable insights across the whole organization. Um, it also allows volunteers to flag up actions and concerns with safe, specific safeguarding alerts. Uh, it has a receipt portal for any expense repayment of volunteers as well. And it also has dedicated support staff with a quick turnaround time. And if I remember rightly, it was about two to four hours. Um, they also have a dedicated volunteer app that um, helps volunteers to find and search for tasks or missions. Um, only uh, registered and approved volunteers can actually see these missions. So it's got a really solid vetting and approval process. Um, it shows the volunteer all they need to know to complete a mission or task. That's saving on staff time with a location calendar, a location a calendar, invite, private call, and et cetera, um, all, from one all, all from one central place. Um, and it allows really quick and easy templatized ways of reporting back on, on a mission as well or task. And I really like the fact that they called it a mission. Um, um, 
The pricing isn't something that I would say is abundantly clear. However, it does seem to be an amalgamation of volunteer cost with staff cost. Um, and both are based on the size of charity, contract length and usage and range from around £6 to £24 per volunteer per year and a £60 to £180 fee per staff per year as well. So um, I've kind of worked it out as if you were a, a one staff manager, um, you're looking at sort of £66 per year, equivalent £5.50 per user per month. Um, but then they've obviously got the cost of how many volunteers you need on top of that as well. And they do have some great case studies online, and um, one from Age UK Gateshead, um, who were one of the first users. They had problems with volunteer activity, so that they were simply asking the question of who was doing what, and it's not. They found that it's not always that simple to answer. Um, they had problems with matching volunteers to tax, tasks or missions. Um, you know, matching a volunteer to a client involves staff time. They are just. They just didn't have go and spare, so needed to look to automate that process. Um, and then safeguarding, you know, as capacity of volunteers and as the number of volunteers increases, uh, oversight can become, you know, more difficult on on the safeguarding and, and compliance side of that. Um, so by using um, by using Volunteero and the, the centralised sort of volunteer management portal, um, the mission matching services and safeguarding, um, you know, Volunteero were actually able to offer, um, we're actually able to increase the volunteer productivity by four for Age UK, increase the number of monthly active volunteers by 75% and save about 300 people hours across the team as well. Um, they also have a 30 day free trial, so absolutely worth a go if that is something you're interested in. And that is it for me. Um, you know, I think it's, it, it, I hope you found something useful, first of all. And I think it's really clear that the volunteer management system can really, really improve your, your organization's operations. It can also, you know, increase that productivity, streamline processes, and really help you to, to forge lasting relationships. You know, all of the options that I've just kind of run through and, and mentioned you know, have, a, have a deserved reputation as credible, reliable, and effective. But, as we said, they'll, you know, they'll all have the positives and negatives as well, but it's it's down to you as an organization to choose the one that best reflects your strategy, your goals and your aims. It's all about understanding your goal first, find out what you want to achieve and then balance those against uh, balance those objectives against the systems on offer. Um, I hope you know you found something useful. I hope we've been able to give you um, a good understanding of some of the platforms out there and what they can do for your organization. And I really hope we've given you something to go take back to, to the powers that be and, and start getting some movement. But um, I will hand over to you now to, to ask me some questions. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Yeah. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. I'm just going to take a drink. Sorry. <laughs> no, well, that that's that's all good. Um, that gives me time to to thank you all for uh, uh, for 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 attending and for for asking loads of uh, loads of questions. We we already have uh, have a few coming in, so uh, we hope um, we we you you got a little bit of uh, uh, more clarity uh, in a vast amount of information about uh, volunteer management system. And uh, without further ado, let me straight diving into the first question from Judith um, who is asking if there's a, a volunteer management system so VMS volunteer management system that does volunteer brokerage um, and can also act as a contact management system uh, database etc have you come across a, a piece of software that would do that volunteer brokerage mm, um, I, I'm not out not I'm well, I'm pretty sure one of these that I went through today could could look do that with a bit more specific uh, mm -hmm. research to be quite honest I'm just trying to flick back through my notes I think one of them was more of a CMS as well um, mm. it might have been team kinetic but I also think there's other things out there that can be man manipulated into such things I know certain CMSs that offer sort of donor management polls as well could also be manipulated into more CMS based um, sort of volunteer management but you might lose out on some of the the sort of other other sides of it being like the 
the engagement sides of it for the, for that you, you might not be able to automate as much um or do as many thank yous which was some of these have but mm -hmm. i will uh, i'll take that one offline for you and have a look in that a little bit de more depth for you and, and come back with with something what i'd like to do after this is i want to take these five and turn them into a lovely infographic which we'll be sending everybody anyway so that'll oh, be yes. one thing i make sure to include in that thank you <laughs> great well thank you um Next question from uh, Fiona, who is not related to you, Chris, because she's called Fiona Hall, but uh, there's, there's a lot of holes out there. <laughs> uh, so, so Fiona was asking about um, AI options, so artificial intelligence um, for successful volunteer matching. If you if you'd come across some interesting platforms or I have not, you know. I was kind of looking at. I looked at the five most popular, and I don't think they're there on AI yet. But just to appease my own sort of tech, the techie in me, I, I'll probably go and do some of that afterwards. But um, I, I would have thought that'd be more bespoke level. Um, sorry, there's an ice cream van outside. <laughs> oh God, yeah, that. that <laughs> Perfect timing. Um, I would look at if it's something you're interested in looking at more specifically though I would speak to organizations like data kind they've done some really cool stuff with AI and data for not necessarily for volunteering but for service management as well uh, for like yeah, for service delivery management so um, they did a great thing with the welcome center in um, Huddersfield which is a small food bank in Huddersfield um, so they, get, they built a sort of machine learning model into people visiting the centre and the specific interactions and needs um, so they could better prioritise um, product basically and support that they needed. So I haven't come across any platform specific yet, but if it's something you're you're looking at and, and want some advice on, I'm sure the likes of data kind super highways will be up for a conversation to facilitate something like that. Hmm. OK, um, yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, Next question, which is uh, probably the total opposite of uh, of AI. Uh, it's more about these significant number of volunteers with no digital access at all. Um, so somebody is asking how they can manage this segment alongside these digitally enabled volunteers. Yeah, so I think in some of these platforms, um, we're really good for that having a mix of it. So. While some of them will have apps, they'll also be telephone number there or email. So while you know they're able to operate without the necess necessity of a smartphone as well. So SMS, you, you want to look for one with SMS messaging, um, which is just your standard text messaging. So that that should be able to facilitate that um, and, and work sort of all encompassing with the digital side of it as well. Absolutely, yes, and 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 is also. Uh, I'd say quite um, important to to also ask your volunteers what what they prefer way of, uh, of, exactly. of you know talking to you um, is whether they they like emails or, or they prefer a good good old telephone call. It's um, a good yeah, it's a good good question to ask you the, the system provider you're looking at as well because you might want you know you might have people using landlines to call you and that's okay but as long as it feeds in that one centralized location on your end you know essentially these systems are set up in a way to make it super easy for the volunteer to get in touch with you but at the same time make it really easy for you to facilitate the many ways of com they communicate mm -hmm. with you as well so what you want to do is all essentially have all those means of communicating um i'm trying to find i think team kinetic had good email and sms communication but find all the ways they communicate with you make sure they filter into that one location absolutely absolutely um somebody was just asking what the acronym api stand for API, yeah, a a API is, is essentially an in integration. I, you know, I've gone totally blank on what the actual, a actual a application, application program, portal programming, program. programming interface. Interface, there you go. Did you have time to look that up? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I know when well, you use API and then, oh, I don't remember what that actually It's one of those things. I don't, I know what it is, but don't know what it, um, yeah. It's just an integrate. It's a, it's a, piece of technology essentially that allows you to to integrate with other apps out there essentially so integrating um you know as to thinking back to a question before you might want to integrate a cms with your volunteer management platform as well or you might want to integrate your email software with your um 
with your volunteer management system. So say you have MailChimp, MailChimp API integrations will help you integrate MailChimp with your volunteer management system. So you can set up your email and, and automation, automated email to go out through that MailChimp app. Brilliant, thank you. Um, David is asking, obviously, uh, based on, on your findings and the, the, the pricing, uh, so some of these platforms seem to be offering, maybe not a charity discount, but at least a free, a sort of freemium and a mm -hmm. 30 days or 15 days free. Correct. Yeah. That's right, yeah. I mean, I think there was all bar one and that was Assemble, which didn't have, uh, Assemble didn't have the 30 day free trial. The rest of them all did. Um, and there was all always, Assemble weren't very, forthright on their pricing which you know they seem to be more catered for the the, the major you know the, the really big organizations out there as well um but the rest of them all had um 30 day free trial which as i said i'd highly recommend everyone to try out first given what we've sort of walked through here look at what what sang to you which one of these sang you go and have a conversation with them tell them what your goals are take the free trial <laughs> <laughs> see if it works see if it doesn't um, and then you know it's it's all about it's all a process it's all about learning um if you're an organization with lots of volunteers what i'd recommend as well is is maybe selecting a few of them don't take this don't take the free try to all of them maybe select five or ten and, and ask them to use it and feedback on what they what they understand about the platform as well and whether it works for them or not and you'll you'll find out whether you know you can tweak it to make it work for them or whether it just doesn't work at all um but yeah use what what i like to call trusted testers <laughs> <laughs> um and, and give let them feedback it for you know maybe you know pick a few people internally a few people externally see what it's like see how it works but yeah always always use the free trial if it's it always in 30 days is a generous one absolutely yes yeah, yeah. Good, good point chris um fiona again is is asking um your view on the per user pricing as it would seem to actively discourage you from growing the number of your volunteers What's your, yeah, your yeah, I, I want to be care careful here as well. <laughs> um, I'd, I think it is, it's different. Mm. Um, that's, that's the volunteer one, isn't it? It's, it is very different. And I was surprised when it, like, I was surprised when I came across it, very different. And it, it, it asked, it, it gave me more questions than it did answers. I think that's the best way I could probably <laughs> answer that question without being too, I want to stay relatively agnostic as well. But I think that's that's a conversation. It was also quite broad. So I think there was there was plenty of room for flexibility in there. And there was, it was it was caveated quite heavily by a volunteer or about, it depends very much on size and usage and all that as well. So um, without having a direct conversation with them, I think it, it would be difficult to, to give a specific comment, but it, I, it, the best way to answer it, give you more questions than answers, yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yes, obviously it, it makes sense when you know you, you might have loads of volunteers at, at some point in the year and then reduce, you know, during normal, more normal times. So, so obviously it would, it would be cheaper, but the other way around, um, it, you know, can can also beg a couple of questions. So, so so best is to um, prepare a, a long list of questions to ask the, yeah. <laughs> the providers. Um, the the I've got two two questions that are more related uh, to to safeguarding um, and DBS check. Um, did you from what you found? Do all of these platforms that that you that you found have a, a sort of DBS section or safeguarding? section they had safeguarding so um it's DB dbs is the background checks right yeah background check yes yeah yeah reference, yeah, yeah. reference so most yeah. of them had sort of referencing reference and background yeah. checking um some of them focused more on it than others so volunteer role was one of the ones that focused specifically on um on safeguarding i'm trying to think remember Volunteer was safeguarding. There was another one that focused quite heavily on referencing. Um, yeah, automated referencing check was Assemble as well. So Assemble and Volunteer were kind of the ones that focused mainly on that aspect of it. The others all had some sort of compliance re regulation built in them as well, whether uh, more on data protection or than, than anything else. Absolutely. OK, thank you. Um, we have time for one more question as it's uh, uh, close to, to 2 p.m. Um, another question was asking, basically, was better impact the only system that was offering e-learning 
e-learning modules to volunteers? That, the, that, yeah, the only one I saw that was doing that, yeah, um, which I thought was quite a nice little sort of USP for them. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the only one I saw who was doing that was quite an extensive library as well. I did have a look at it. There was lots of a list of pretty much every every part of the platform with a, a small a, a sort of a 15 minute ish webinar on there. So, yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's great. Um, and uh, and then one last one. Um, Snuck so, it in. Uh, yes, I'll <laughs> look it in. Uh, do you, we know whether which was the best platform, in your opinion, for, for keeping all comms in one place? Um, did, did you find that? Was it uh, easy to to see from from your from your findings? Or I, it would from from the the amount of research I've done in, and it was re relatively extensive. Without using it, I wouldn't entirely know, mm -hmm. um, and I don't think I could give an accurate um, an accurate opinion on that. Um, I'm trying to. Uh, there was one that sort of stood out to me as sort of very comms focused, um, and I think it might have been. Um, I think it might have been Team Team Connect had the email and SMS communication that was all in one centralised dashboard. But again, Volunteeros, um, mm. I really like Volunteeros sort of mission and uh, mission based structure as well. Um, they had the sort of it was all sort of form based and built in so that the, it was very, very, very automated if that was, is what you were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't get in and have a chance to use every dashboard, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Although you probably would have uh, wanted to try everything. As much, <laughs> okay. as, I, as, much as I would. <laughs> Uh, but great. Well, that's all we got time for today. Uh, thanks very much, Chris, uh, first thank of all, you. for putting the presentation together. Um, and thank you very much to all of you for, for attending. We hope that you, uh, you've you enjoyed today's presentation. Um, we will shortly be sending you a quick feedback by email. So if you can spare a couple of minutes to fill it in, that'd be, that'd be absolutely fabulous. Um, it's been uh, a pleasure being your host today. And uh, thankfully, we have been quite lucky with teams, so we haven't got... Uh, <laughs> too many technical issues. Um, whether you, you joined us for the first time or our regular, we, we hope you tune in again to our next session, uh, which uh, will show you uh, how to actually recruit and train volunteers. Uh, so maybe a, a step before uh, managing them uh, and that uh, webinar will be on the 29th of July. Uh, coming up next, we'll also have our next podcast uh, being released next week about burnout in the charity sector. Um, and uh, you know, also uh, in October, so we've still got time, uh, our uh, long awaited fundraising day uh, virtual conference dedicated to, to all things digital fundraising. Um, and then for those of you who are more interested in cybersecurity, uh, we'll also have a, a, an a vast uh, live demo upcoming in August. Um, so tell uh, your colleagues um, and friends from the sector to join as well, as uh, we always enjoy putting all of that uh, together for, for you to to learn from. Uh, once again, thank you all very much for attending today and we hope we see you again soon.